Welcome to Jump School. I'm your host, Asan Ali, aka The Style Jumper. On this podcast, you'll learn a ton of things. We'll talk about style, confidence, etiquette, creativity, and entrepreneurship. Today's episode was brought to you by my new book, Why Style Matters, The Mindset of Dressing Well and How It Impacts Your Life. To get your autographed copy, click the link in the description. Today's guest is an entrepreneur, tailor, and custom clothier, the authentic gentleman himself and Houston's own, Manfred Spencer. Episode 25. The following is an excerpt from Instagram Live. Let's go. Yep, yep. That's what's up, man. Yeah, so, so how are you doing today? I'm amazing. I'm doing great. I really appreciate you tonight. Um, you know, I know that your time is valuable. And so <laughs> we'll, we'll get started. So Not for, for sure. everyone, you know, everyone that's hopping on tonight, thank you so much for uh, your time hopping on to sure, thank you. tonight's Jump School with the amazing, I'm a fan. First off, thank you, bro. Of uh, <laughs> your brother, man, Fred Spencer. Uh, welcome to Jump School, man. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So let's get sure. started. Um, tell tell everybody, you know, your origin story, like where where you grew up. You know, I I know that you know you reside in Texas right now. So yeah. Tell us about how you grow up. Uh, so yeah, man. Um, I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, Town? born, raised, been here for. for forever bro <laughs> okay. um yeah so i guess uh the, the way i kind of got started in the in the whole fashion well actually i always felt like i was in fashion bro like even coming up um like we used to wear uniforms to school or whatever and i still i was trying to still get the outfits together we was already we were still wearing uniforms we just wearing uniforms you know yeah. um but yeah but i mean like me actually probably like trying to take it serious and and do something like that i started that maybe like like about 10 years ago Mm -hmm. um and that's when i kind of started sewing and stuff like that i started off making bow ties things of that nature but um the vision was always to like you know do more you know what i'm saying like like make mm -hmm. clothes and, and suits and different things um so yeah i just kind of started there and then just kind of continued to grow from there man and just just learn different things and uh stuff like that so yeah man yeah that's what's up man so let's back up a little bit you uh yeah. so you grew up in houston yes sir uh, the middle of the country is hot you know you for know. sure it's really you really know. hot here bro in the summertime <laughs> for real <laughs> it's hot man you know i grew up in south carolina so you know quite honestly growing up in south carolina i never even understood that texas i never considered texas south because in my mind uh -huh. the south was you know east of the mississippi you know and down gotcha. you know? yeah and yeah, so yeah yeah i went to the navy and i met these brothers from texas man and i was like dude Y'all country than me. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but you know, growing up, you know, in the 80s, listening to, like, um, the Ghetto Boys, mm -hmm. you know, that was a huge influence for me. So, yeah. you know, growing up, who, who, who were some of your influences? So I'm going to back up when you talked a little yeah. bit about, um, you know, uniforms and things of that nature. But who were some of your early influences in life? And how, how did that structure your mindset? Uh, so my my earlier uh, my early influences would be uh, like my mom, my grandma, uh, my grandpa, um, my aunts. Uh, but but mainly them. Uh, they kind of raised me. Um, I was the only child. Well, I grew up the only child. I do, I do have brothers and sisters. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, those are my main influences, man. Just just them showing like hard work. My grandmother, uh, she worked in a, in the dry cleaning industry for. I mean, ever since I was born up until, you know, she retired or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of was always around clothing because I, I kind of uh, went with her um, mm -hmm. as she worked. And as, as I kind of continued to grow in the in the, in like the business or whatever, come to find out she was doing some of the same things that I, I'm doing now. And I didn't even kind of know that like previously that my mom as well. Um, yeah. she, uh, she did the same thing. Uh, she was she always tells me that one of her part-time jobs were, uh, was to like make clothes for people and stuff like that. So, um, those are like, when it comes to like, I guess the fashion aspect of things, those are like the, like my main influences there. My mom. Yeah. You know, when we we're kids, we have these, um, these influences that we don't register. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you were just around it, you know, you're around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, girl, my pressing clothes are working in that. For you sure. know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and when we were kids, you know, our, our parents would get those patterns. 
-hmm. and they'll be sewing stuff up. You know, mm -hmm. I, I remember my first custom piece and probably my last pieces, to be honest, was, <laughs> <laughs> was my mom showed me a vest. It was for a wedding. It was for my wife's oh, wow. wedding. I was, I was five years old, and I remember that. I Man. remember her. You know what I mean? I remember her yes. doing that. And um, to your point, you just don't know the impact those influences, how it carries sure. over in your life as you grew up. So then you're saying that you, um, you know, you were wearing uniforms. So, yeah. you know, obviously you want to be fly. How, how did you, did you try to, to flip it a little bit? Yeah, I, I guess, the, I guess just thinking back, it probably was like, you know, the fit, um, you know, like how I tuck my shirt in, the shoes that I'm wearing, you know, like, kind of like little things, things that you could kind of control, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. though things are still the same. I even yeah. found myself doing that um, when just working jobs as well. Like I always, like when it came to the uniform at work, I would always push it as far to the boundary as I could get away just so I wouldn't have to kind of like look like everybody else, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. so, but yeah. So it sounds like, you know, fit was already instilled in you about, you know. Sure. How, were you always a slender guy, kind of tall? No, nah, I wasn't, bro. Um, actually, like, throughout high school, I was actually a, a lot chubbier. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Like, when I turned, like, 21 or something like that, like, shortly after high school, I kind of lost a lot of weight, man. I've been kind of maintaining, yeah. Were you, were you feeling yourself when you lost that weight? You was talking trash? Uh, no, nah, bro, I wasn't, was bro. Like? To be honest, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. wasn't, man. I just was – uh. Actually, I kind of didn't even really, like, notice almost. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? It kind of was just like a gradual thing. And I just I looked up and was like, oh, I guess I am a lot skinnier than I used to. You know, people just be telling you, like, oh, you look, you know, you're skinnier. At first, I, yeah. I didn't even notice it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, that's what's up. You know, um, when did you start registering? I mean, I know you were saying that, you know, whether it was work in retail. Yeah. Um, and then even in school, trying to flip it. When did you start saying, you know what? There's something about clothes that I that really feels like it fits for me. Cause some people they you know they wear you know kicks and things of that nature, mm -hmm. but they some others are really really into the gear like how it fits, mm -hmm. color coordination patterns. Yes. Yeah, yeah. When did you start registering that man? This is something that really speaks to me. Um, I would say in high school that's when I was really like uh like trying to find my style and um understanding things like that i was like you know that was like in the in like 2005 and stuff that's like when um like like pharrell and kanye west like they were like like really like not saying they're not popular but that was like they like their prime you know what i'm saying when i was really getting it so they kind of influenced me a lot but that's like like seeing different aspects of fashion like the way that they were putting it together was when i kind of started like oh, okay cool like um i'm interested in this like this this has to be something like i can actually start designing stuff like this you know mm -hmm. like I, I feel like i could do that so like high school i would say was like when i was just like all right cool let me figure out like this fashion things i think it is for me and then um when i decided to actually make it an actual business um i just kind of came to a point like in my life where i was like dang like what am i gonna do like i felt I got to a point where I wasn't really like like doing too much of them, but just going to work. You know, I was going to work and going to school, but I wasn't like fulfilled. And I was like, and what can I do to like make me feel better? And also make me some more money too. That was the other thing. I was like kind of broke. So I was yeah, like, yeah. what can I do to make me some extra money? So then I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna start making bow ties. I'm gonna, I just was like, I like fashion. I want to learn how to sew. I'm just hopping in right here. So, so that, like the, about the 10 year mark, like when I was that part. Okay, so did you um, did you just find a pattern? How did you even come up with the, the boldness of like, hey, I'm gonna make bow ties? Yeah, you know I mean that that, that that takes some some courage. You know what I mean? To like yeah. say, you know what, that's something because not everybody even rock bow ties. For sure, They're afraid a lot of dudes afraid of bow ties. Man. Yeah, I was actually just like, I was actually into bow ties. So I was like, all right, cool. Let me make something that I like. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure other people will like. And I was like, all right, so. You know, the idea is like, what can you do to make like your product different, right? So I was like, all right, I'm gonna do buttons on the bow tie so you can unbutton it and add like different, like two different bow ties and put it together and make like one tie, right? Okay. So um, that was kind of like my whole vision behind it. But how I actually did it was, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I need to make bow ties. Who do I know that knows how to sew? So I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna go to my grandmother's house. So, you know what I'm saying? I got the pattern. Uh, went to the store, got the pattern, got me some fabric. We cut out, and me and my grandmother, we just made a bow tie for the first time. And I was like, dang, I actually made a bow tie. Like, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, and then from there, I was like, 
just could like continue to just learn just to do it as much as possible like with all my free time mm -hmm. and just kind of keep doing it so it was just it just kind of came off of interest of what i liked and i was like if i like it i could see people like kind of get into like this dapper phase with things like we looking at suits and stuff like this so i was like mm -hmm. it has to be a market for these so let me just try to do this let's see what yeah. happens so how long did the, the bow tie business itself last um still doing it it's still going bro it's, it's, it's still the same thing it just kind of morphed you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. kind of just like added things on top of things you know what i'm saying so um but i guess to answer your question when did i probably take it from like just making bow ties to making other things mm -hmm. um i don't know man probably like a, a year i never yeah I, maybe afterwards i was like let me just try to make a shirt or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let me just try to make something. So, um, yeah, maybe like a year, I guess. Wow. That's, that's, yeah. that's great, man. You know, sometimes we hold on to just one concept or one idea. Exactly. And then we never change it. Or we we feel like maybe we get bored of it and then we just yeah. quit all together. But so yeah. just fear that you evolved and saw, exactly. you, know, you know. That was you know, always the idea, though, like, my idea, like, when I did it, was like, all right, cool, I'm going to start on bow ties. I need to get the basics of sewing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was my, my, my kickstarter to sewing. I was like, all right, cool. As I continue, then I'm going to have to figure out, like, I want to learn how to do other things. You know what I'm saying? I need it to be more than just bow ties, you know? Okay. So with your uh, with your first shirt, did you have the Theo Huxtable shirt? <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, I actually didn't, man. It, it actually That's fit like tough. a regular shirt. Some of the stuff was off, though, but... Like the length and everything was pretty was pretty on point, you know what I'm saying? Because I made sure yeah. measure and all of that. Because okay. I don't know what she was doing though, bro. She must have just took the scissors and just got, got <laughs> the and then stitching together or something, bro. I don't know what how she did that one, bro. I'll I'll never forget that that episode. I was growing up watching that, and he put that shirt on, bro. Was, I was like, oh, what is <laughs> that? Was so funny, bro. So funny. I love it. I love it. I love it. So um. You know, I was thinking about you. You know, you being in Texas and growing up. Yeah. Um, what are some essential? You know, now that we're starting to transition, right? It, it's it's March or April, April first. Yeah. Um, what are some essential garments in Texas that you would recommend? You know what I mean? Because sometimes, yeah. you know, based on your environment, there's some pieces that you need to have in your stable. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, what what are some things that you, you would recommend? Man, you know what? What I what I would recommend, what I what I know I'm gonna have in my collection. That's what I'm gonna speak on is yeah. some pants. I need me some good fitting linen pants, you know, because they lightweight, breathable, and they look cool. Uh, a straw hat, any kind of style, because you gotta have a breeze coming through, man. I, I'm bald, so it feel good, you know, when that when that breeze yeah. comes through that hat and hits yes, your head. Sir. So that. Um, what else would I say? um some lightweight shirts like silk silk type shirts or um you know something like that to kind of keep it nice and airy so you don't burn up when the wind yeah. blows you get off anything that's breathable man yeah yeah it was definitely a, essential for sure you know what i was i was checking you out so i i discovered you you know by the brother jay gas yeah uh, the good brother jay brother, good brother. You know, big bro big bro little bro to me yeah and uh you know I was thinking like this bro this brother right here is so fly, you know. And when you when you're slender and you can own your space, yeah, you know, the images that you've taken of yourself. Did you are you the photographer or you have a photographer first of all? No, actually, so lately my pictures have been being taken by uh my sister in law. Mm -hmm. Um she actually owns a brand twelve twenty two. If y'all don't know about it, y'all need to check it out. Um, but uh, twelve twenty two, twelve twenty two. It's a plus size line, bro. She okay. is killing shit with it, bro. But um, she's actually been taking a lot of my pictures. Like we do oh. this, thing where she take pictures for me, and I take pictures for her for her website and stuff like yeah. that. So, yes, so. killing it, bro. <laughs> for sure. So, so, yeah. so ex expressing that, and I want to ask you this. Um, you know, you being a ball brother, mm -hmm. you know, when was that moment when you embraced that part of you? Because a lot of brothers. You know, we'll hold on, man. That's a good question, bro. You know, so hey, I, what, was, what was that evolution of the ball head for you? So let me tell you, bro. All right, so my, my line my line was already received, man. When it pitches, bro, I started seeing more forehead than hair, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, man. 
my girl wouldn't really tell me. She was like, no, nah, man, it look good. It look good. You cool. Yeah, yeah. But I started um, just kind of seeing it, bro. And um, and one day, I don't know if I did this on, well, one day I was like, all right, I'm going to cut my hair, right? I said I wanted to give, a, give myself a haircut because mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't want to go to the barbershop or something. But I cut it. wasn't looking right. So I was just like, all right, cool. I'm going to just shave all this shit off, bro. So I just went, uh, uh, uh. And then afterwards, bro, like I lined my beard up. You know, I did yeah. stuff. And I was like, you know, you don't look too bad, bro. Bob, yeah. you, know what I'm you don't look too bad. So I was like, all right, cool. Um, I, and then that was it, bro. After you, cause you know, after you cut something like that, bro, it's never gonna be the same. Like any, any sure. little, hair, yeah. Because it, it's gonna struggle to come back. If you, once you chop it off, yeah, it's gonna struggle coming but, back. So you might as well just let it let it let go. It, but yeah, that's kind of how it happened, bro. It was just like, all right, cool. Let's okay. rock with it. Okay, so what about the beard game? Because you, you got, like, the, the beard beard. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> that boy is down there. So Thank you, bro. Was, up. Yeah, it, it looks good, man. So what was the evolution of the beard? Um, So, like, you know, through our high school, like, we had to shave in my school. Like, mm -hmm. so we always used to. But, again, that's me pushing the boundaries. I always, I always had the little mustache and the goatee. But mine was like, to be honest with you, it was, like, kind of light. You couldn't really tell in the high school. Um, But when I graduated. Graduated though, I was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not shaving no more. I don't care. Well, I, I'm, I'm got to have facial hair. I'm not going bald. So that was kind of that. And um, I just kind of always like let it grow for a long time. And then after a certain point, I might trim it down like super low. Not bald though. I've never, I've never been bare face like mm -hmm. since forever. But since my probably graduation when we walked across stage in high school, I was, that was the last time I was because they made you shave. Yeah, but, um, yeah. yeah, but. Yeah, I just kind of always had it. And, and sometimes I always feel like sometimes when I shave it off, it's like I try to do it like it when I feel like it's a different phase of my life. Mm -hmm. And I kind of cut it off and just kind of like let it grow again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but right now I've been like in this one phase where I've kind of had this one for a second. But I feel like it's time right now. It's feeling like time where I need to cut it off, bro, and do me a little I'm thinking about it, bro. Oh man, I you know look, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be waiting to see what that looks like. Yeah. You know, cause cause we you know we end up. Uh, we become a different person, right? For sure. You know, we, we, we someone gets still used to a certain look mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. you, and then you make that change. It's like, man, did I didn't even know that was under you? Dude, I, yeah. wore, I wear a mask at work, and people didn't. they like, oh, my God. It's like, dude, that's you? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to you know, show the beard. It's so <laughs> trippy, man. It's so interesting. Yeah, for, right? sure. for um, sure. So your family, man, how is, how is family? Uh, influence your hustle, you know, uh, like the drive. Yeah, tremendously, because, you know, um, well, I'm getting married here soon, um, and yeah. just, like, come together as one household now, so, mm -hmm. like, just, like, that whole thing is, like, yeah, man, uh, like, for real, we got to make sure that we're providing for the, the whole family, you know what I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. giving, like, a different, a totally different push um, mm -hmm. to kind of continue. And then even more so than that, like, like even just thinking about like like my son, like just trying to uh, give an example for him on like what what it looks like to be like out here in in the world, you know what I'm saying? Giving it positive, so that also gives me the push to kind of always be that positive influence in his life as well. Um, so yeah, bro, it, it just it 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 um it's a tremendous push that it gives you. It's different mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. So you um you. You would consider yourself a tailor, a clothier, or, or, or you know, a custom designer. Where, where do you see yourself um, in, that, in that umbrella? Or kind uh, of the evolution I'm, of that? I'm all of the above, bro. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. uh, I have just like different parts of my business. So we do alterations, um, you know, the custom, uh, bespoke, like all of, all those different things, man. So I have um, a, just all of the aspects. It's like maybe like a one stop shop, maybe for for your suit. Okay. But yeah. So with COVID, with the advent of COVID, what were some of the things that you had to adjust? Like, you know, there, there, I'm assuming there's some pivots. I mean, but Texas, you know, y'all y'all do what y'all want to do out there. Y'all wide open, bro. <laughs> Why? And I kind of like, by God's grace, bro, just move it, like moving almost the same, but just like with masking, you know, sanitizer. But um, to be honest, people were still like like coming through and getting stuff because people were still act some people were still actually working, you know. And uh, doing different things, Cause like you said, we were in Houston. And it's been kind of kind of wild, bro. We like people still celebrating and stuff like that, celebrating life. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, like just just being more so, just in tune with like you know, what I'm saying 
the, the extra sanitation levels and stuff like that. But to be honest, I didn't really have to change like too, too much of, of, of anything. It was pretty much the same, bro. That's it kind of did slow down a little bit, but I mean, you know, well, I mean, what it has to, you don't know what's going on, bro, in the world. Yeah. Like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, holding on to their bread for a little bit just until we figure Yo, out what's going what's on. That, bro? Yeah, because yeah. people were talking about like, this could be a year, this could be like a three year thing, or like, because like, they were talking crazy numbers when it first started. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. yeah. So, <clears throat> What are what are some things that people if if I'm considering to get a, a piece from you kind of mm -hmm. walk me through that that scenario you know I'm a yeah. potential client sure walk me through I, I'm, I'm this is my so, first we're gonna have this conversation yeah for sure for sure so um you know you'll give me a call or send me a DM you know you you schedule an appointment online you know you'll come by the shop um or I'll come to you depending on like you know what what scheduling is like for both of us. Um, I bring the fabrics, um, you have ideas. Like I always like when people have like some, like some kind of like idea, if you don't, that's cool too. But it's always nice when people have like something like they kind of know a little bit of what they're looking for. You know what I'm saying? So, um, we talk about what you like. Um, and then from there, I kind of just crack open the books, bro. We start looking at fabrics or, um, if I don't have any fabrics that are kind of suiting your needs, then I'll say, all right, cool, let me go and find some stuff. And then I'll bring bring you some ideas and some samples back. And we kind of work on the design and all the little small, um, I guess, aesthetics of the, the item. Mm -hmm. And we got kind of, and we make it. Takes about maybe like a, a few weeks, maybe like four weeks or so. Three okay. or four, and we'll do a fitting and we'll kind of go from there, man. Is, is, um, is things, are things made local or things, you know, outsource how does that how does that work you know if yeah. you're thinking about it because especially i think there's a lot of guys this has been a a, a resurgence of the interest right mm -hmm. in bespoke or custom suiting becoming mm -hmm. a clothier there's an attractiveness to it you know an appeal if you will mm -hmm. so what does that look like for your business because i was thinking about two things one is there a lot of offshore processing and and putting things together but then also from the fabric side of things, like how, how do you source your fabrics? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think those are two really interesting questions that, that people sure. have. So, yeah, no. Nah, um, so I work both locally and um, offshore. Um, like here in Houston, we have a couple of good uh, places that, that you could purchase fabric from, Hot Fashion Fabric, um, for those that know. Um, and, you know, Joann's, they always have some pretty good stuff, too. Um, so you can always check those places here locally is what I do. And then um, also online, um, like some places like Move Fabrics and things of that nature. But I also do have some um, overseas or offshore um, connects as well, like over in China and some in, like, uh, Great Britain and stuff like that for the different fabric options and stuff like that. Okay. Did you end up having, like, you know, I, I believe that, you know, especially if you look broad, right? You go <laughs> the areas of the world that's really highly hyper focused on men's suiting. Yeah. You look at your Italy. Yeah. You know, you know your your London. Mm -hmm. Um, was there a, a mentor for you in this process as you evolved? Was there someone that kind of like said, "Hey, bro, let me show you the way," or did you? I mean, this is the era obviously of the internet. Did mm -hmm. you just like do it all on your own and like just kind of like grinded it out, or there was some some people that kind of so, pushed you along the way? Yeah, nah, it was uh, who kind of sparked it, and then I kind of did kind of kind of feel my way through like towards the end. But someone that kind of sparked the the interest, um, it was a, a guy I don't know, Rich Fresh. Everybody knows Rich yeah, Fresh. Rich Fresh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, like a long time ago, you know, he kind of sparked the interest. I kind of seen it. I kind of did some business with him, like, okay. and he kind of gave me some some feedback and things of that nature. And um, and th um, as I kind of like continued to grow and stuff like that, I kind of, like I said, kind of started to figure other things out and things of that nature too. So um, I kind of did have a mentor, but I kind of did did a lot of it on my own as well. You know? Yeah. 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 Would you say that? Um you know, off the rack, if you will. <laughs> What's the value? Because I think sometimes, you know, obviously, if you grew up like <laughs> us, right, and we're going to the mall, or we're going to Macy's or Penny's or, yeah. you know, Belk or Dillard's, those kind of stores getting suits, you know, our parents buying it for us for Easter <laughs> or something like that. You know, speaking of Easter coming up, 
I know, right? You know what I mean? So what, what, what was that like? You know, how, how do you communicate that difference of mindset for someone who's considered, you know, purchasing off the rack all the time? Yeah. Say, hey, bro, you know, or, or sis, you may want to think about this approach mm -hmm. and why is it valuable to go that route when it comes to, you know, the more tailoring and sure. custom. Yeah, so, um, you know, personally, I don't really um, kind of like persuade anyone to get the custom. You, to be honest, I'm just, just coming from my perspective because um, I feel like you actually have to like want to, like you have to love it you know, enough to, you know, want to have a custom suit because you have to understand like there's a lot of small pieces that kind of goes into a custom suit. And this is what kind of makes it, better you know what i'm saying because you get to pick all of these little small details like how big you want the lapels how big you want the pocket flaps you want to go double or or a single breast jacket because you know if you go into the store and you want to this fabric but double breast you can't do that mm -hmm. but when you somebody like me you say okay man for i like this fabric right here then we could kind of start to pick these little small details um so that's one way that i kind of kind of explain it whenever someone is interested in it to kind of build their interest more is to be like yeah this is the main reason why you should because and then the fit is going to be superior as well because you take certain measurements to account for certain things in your body that a suit off the rack will never be able to account for because they're accounting for this box that they created. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that I kind of say whenever I'm I'm telling people like, hey, this is one reason why you should do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, so, I'm never against the off the rack joint though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But just make sure you do go see your tailor though. After you don't, you don't buy it and wear it. Okay. You, you know what I'm saying? Just, just buy it. Well, sometimes I guess you could buy it and wear it, but it's always something. Something can be done. So if so if I'm buying some belt rack and I'm looking for a tailor, yeah. what are some what are some things that I should be looking for in that tailor? Like how do I know that this person uh, is going to do it right for me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that yeah. now you kind of like you just hoping that that they're going to do do the right thing. Are they going to the the cleaners and to a tailor, or are they going to like they finding a tailoring shop? Yeah. So. I don't really know too much about dry cleaners tailors. I, I've heard that sometimes they don't do like the best job, so it might be better to go to actual like place that's only for tailoring. Mm -hmm. um, but what you should be looking for in your tailor is someone that listens to you, because at the end of the day, you're the one that's wearing the whatever the garment is. So sometimes people are kind of picky on the way that they like stuff fit to fit them, or if you have a specific vision. Like, you want to be able to tell them, like, hey, I want to do this, this, and that. And they don't say, oh, no, nah, don't do that. That's too this. That's too that. Because I have a lot of people that come to me and say, hey, I tried to take this to the tailor, and I was trying to tell them this, that, and the third. And they was like, yeah, no, nah, we're not doing that pretty much. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. make sure that your tailor does listen to you because, again, this is your work fit. But if you don't know, then it is cool to ask your tailor. You know what I'm saying? But make sure that you feel comfortable with them and, the, and that they could get that style that you're looking for. Okay, so if, if I'm coming into this industry, like I'm curious now, like, and I'm saying, hey, man, I'm thinking about becoming a custom clothier or tailor, yeah. what type of investment financially in time? Because I think people don't really understand those two things, those components. Yeah. yeah. Um, what does that look like? And also, what are some of the missteps that people make when they try sure. to go to the plane? So um, I think you should make a decision on, like, if you want, if it's important to you to sell this stuff or if it's important to you to like kind of like like grow like the business or you know what i'm saying like grow the business you know what i'm saying because well not now i don't even want to say that let me take that back let me take that back let me take that back now that i think about it but um i do think you need to understand like where you want to be at in the business because like sewing the clothes it does take a lot of time bro mm -hmm. um so you want to make sure that whatever you're doing you know um you understand the sacrifice of time because when you when you're sewing bro it's a it takes up a lot like i spend a lot of nights in my shop bro mm. like <laughs> like for real like like yeah. making stuff and sometimes like i'm probably gonna be up here late tonight making stuff you know what i'm saying because i got some stuff that i need to get done um but you got to understand that time investment man um and i guess financially um it's a little bit of an investment man if you want to get like a good sewing machine i would always say get you an industrial machine if you really want to learn how to sew because i think that's the best the best thing to sew on if you can you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um but i mean and those machines go for like like 
like twelve hundred um dollars and then you want to get you like a um a, a, a serger um you want to get you um and really those two things are probably the only thing that you need if you get you a good straight stitch machine and a serger you can mm -hmm. pretty much make whatever you need to make and That's it, what's up. yeah so That's it's a little bit of a investment hopefully i answered your question i feel like i went you on did. You, you know you yeah. did bro you did you did what would you say maybe we're going to continue to talk about style what what would you sure. say is one of the most underrated accessories that people don't oh. maximize on let me think bro underrated accessory probably the handkerchief maybe maybe like because like a lot of times people want to go for like the more of the solid options but even if you wear an apprentice suit you can always throw like some a crazy handkerchief and that'll bring in some more colors mm -hmm. um so i would say maybe the handkerchief yeah okay okay um so is that a pork pie you wearing right now your hat is honest like i don't even i probably it's, should know thing, but i don't even know bro i was it, uh i just seen a joker um one time me and my girl we went to um new orleans yeah and we was mm -hmm. in like it was like this down underground mall or something like that and i seen the hat and i was like i got a copy so i don't even know bro i just seen yeah. it bro it's dope man shout Thank out to my boy dash dash hudson uh, uh -huh. dash is still on dash rocks the pork pie too that flat oh, it's it's a fly look man rocket though yeah you're right good man. it's unconventional you know what yeah. i mean everyone wear like yeah. the wide brim or you know cool. like or, or like the fedora with the, the yeah. real curve so that that you know that flat personally yeah 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 so that's dope man um so i wanted to to talk about some things um like what what you would call like your personal style so you know one of the things with you know style jumping the jump school i, I really want people to understand the value of nonverbal communication mm-hmm and so like even like when i saw your photos you were speaking when i was speaking you know what i mean it's like okay this brother knows what to wear how it looks on his body and the value and impact of that to create opportunities for yourself you know you have some professional uh, athletes that you that are your clients let's talk about like the value of that and understanding that of style and, and fashion and how that can really create opportunity for you for sure so like Style and fashion, I always said that, like, well, really, it's, it's the first thing that people see when they see you, like, before you say anything, like, it's it's the first thing. So that's why I always kind of put important, not necessarily importance on it. No, I would say importance on it because I, I care about how I dress, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I pick my clothes wisely, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's that's one of the main reasons because it's the first thing that, that anyone sees. Um, and I, I guess, like, when it comes to, I guess, putting it together, I guess I just kind of like, I'm really like a, like a, a, a free spirited person. I just kind of grab stuff and be like, all right, let me see how I can make this work. Let me see, you know what I'm saying? Let me try something different. Um, yeah. And kind of picking, picking the stuff out that way. Um, but yeah, no, that's the real reason why, man. Cause it's like the first thing that, that anybody sees, bro. It's so interesting because, you know, what I believe for us men of color, number one, you know, what we wear it's truly a matter of life or death, right? What hood you going into? Yeah. And also, even when you come into the context of getting involved with, with the police and things of that nature, mm -hmm. job opportunities, but definitely when it comes to the police, you know, how you're, you understand those nonverbal cues, you right. understand, you know, what you're wearing and how the message that is sending. And obviously, people should have the right to wear exactly what they want to wear. Exactly. You know, they, we really should have that that um, that right. You know, exactly. It's something that we shouldn't have to consciously think about. But we do, as black men, I think we have to take time to really start processing those things because we're doing checkpoints on average when we walk outside of the house, and people don't talk about that. People don't really understand outside of the culture what what that's like what are some things that you're thinking about when you walk out of the door and even when you leave your little man your son that young king yeah you know what are some things that you want to impress upon him creating a visual for him but also as you're walking out the door what are some things that you're processing and when you're putting your stuff together um 
So really, like, <laughs> to be honest, whenever I'm getting dressed, bro, I just kind of just, like, just try to put on stuff that I like. Like, to be honest, I don't really just, like, think about, like, all of those, like, levels of things. Mm. Probably, I, probably I should, but I don't. You know what I'm saying? I just kind of just, like, like put it on or whatever. Um, but I guess I, I do try to uh, portray whenever I'm, I'm getting dressed, uh, like, a, not necessarily mild manner, but, like, like somebody that, you know, it's not, it's, I'm not, not really a threat. I'm, like, not trying to, like, kill you or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I try like kind of dress in a more of a, a dapper way, I guess, you know, it, with, with pieces that I kind of kind of like. Yes. Yeah. I, I hope that. Because the reason why I asked that, and, and I'm glad yeah, you said yeah. that, I was thinking I was listening to um, Rest in Peace to the late, great Nipsey Hussle. Uh -huh. And Nipsey, you know, was talking about this thing today or yesterday was the anniversary of his death, but he was talking and he was saying like what he sees, like when they used to go like on a run, you know, he was a part of a, an affiliation. Yeah he was looking for someone that looked like him. He'll pass us, the squares he would call, you know, he passed those guys. Yeah. To go look for someone that looks like them. Mm. But it's almost like we create, we can create like this, again, that nonverbal communication that that's not the lane that I'm in. Exactly. You know what I mean? So you're not going to necessarily draw that energy, if you will, to you. So, exactly. you know what I mean? And so we kind of like, It makes sense. It makes sense. You kind of do attract different things when you dress different ways for mm -hmm. sure for sure mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah i just never <laughs> i don't know why i never thought about it like that yeah, yeah. you know it, it's just it's interesting man you know we um the older i get uh -huh. you know, we'll boy you see these great boys I, you know, <laughs> it's, it's real That's wisdom now bro it, it is not you That's know and i appreciate it I, I love it you know what i mean yeah but i also love young brothers um because the, the approach to style is different you know yeah and seeing someone like yourself who is very expressive in how what you wear and is is a particular but some sometimes you i believe for you and you can correct me if i'm wrong it's a gift for you it's a gift for you to just walk in and like go in the closet and just excuse me pull it together because you you know you just have that vision but a lot of guys don't have it yeah that's true i think it's not i don't think it's a gift bro i think it's a trained eye mm, like, okay let's talk about your trained eye Let, let's talk about it like um i just used to spend hours and hours bro looking at fashion stuff like mm. tumblr you familiar with tumblr i'm yeah. sure right? i used to spend like all my time on there bro looking at like style or finding like different things or researching this researching that like just hours and hours so just think about like just putting all that combined knowledge in and just trying to like take what you have and make it <clears throat> something equally cool to that you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so I think that's all it is, bro. It's just a trained eye, not necessarily a gift, you know? That's a good uh -huh. point, man. You know, I never thought of it like that, you know? Yeah. Because <clears throat> the way I would look at it is, for me, you know, growing up in the South and, and being the oldest of, in my family, um, you know, we didn't have a lot, you know what I mean? So, you know, it was that hand-me-downs. Yeah, yeah. You know, mom, mom and dad was young, so they was working, you know? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I used to hate first day of school, bro. I used to hate it. <laughs> Wow, bro. Cause I, you know, I knew I wasn't gonna get like two fits. That was it. Yeah, yeah. So I had to learn from me, mm -hmm. you know, to your point of it was trained because I had to learn how do I put the little bit that I had together to and make, make that stretch that boy out for the week. You know what but, I mean? So, so you know what I mean? So that's, that's, the, that's the fun, bro. That's the fun part. Yeah, yeah. At least I find it fun these days. I know back then you was like, damn, why I gotta do this shit? But uh -huh. <laughs> like, why? But but now I feel like it's a game. Like, all right, cool. How can I put this together like this right here to make something different? For sure, yeah. it became an art. You know? Yeah, it, it became cool. an art. You know what <laughs> I mean? So, and I guess that's where I defaulted to gift because mm -hmm. then you know you learn how to package it and For present sure. it present, if you will. Yeah. Um, so I want to mm -hmm. do something something fun with you. Um, this is what I call uh, the uh, creative last supper. And okay. So some of these these individuals, I'm gonna date myself, but I think you can appreciate some of it. And I was gonna do this whole play of either or, but I pretty much, you know, you just fly. So I ain't even gonna be playing these <laughs> games. You know what I mean? So this is the creative, the creative Last Supper. These are gonna be twelve cats that you're uh -huh. gonna be rocking with you at the Last Supper. Y'all gonna talk about chill, whatever. So we're gonna we're gonna start with Martin doing the Martin show, or Will doing 
the Fresh Prince. Mm. I'm gonna go Will. Travis he Scott. Was, he was creative with his stuff. Like how yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, out. Like it was some yeah, yeah. We going Will. Will, Will was fly. He, he put that East Coast, you know, that, that Philly on there. Yeah. Um, Tribe Called Quest or The Roots. Uh, I'm gonna go the roots. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All like, right. And the guy on the drum and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. All right. Outcast or Wu Tang? Outcast. Outcast. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Childish Gambino or Tyler the Creator? Oh, damn. Why you gotta put them two together, bro? Oh, yeah, like, man. Dang, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Dang, bro. I'm gonna go Childish Gambino, bro. I'm gonna go okay, Childish Gambino. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, Childish Gambino is, is car, bro. Like, he. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Cold blooded. Oh. All right. Um, um, Kanye. Mm -hmm. Or um, our boy from uh, Ablo. Gosh, I'm just drawing a blank. Um, Virgil. So Kanye or Virgil? Design wise goes. What's that? Are you talking about as far as like their design wise? Yeah. Oh, no. just, Ask up who gonna be with me? Who gonna be chilling? I'm yeah. going. You going? Like, yeah. Now, nah, cause he influenced like everything, bro. Like he's the 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 ultimate influencer. Yeah. He is. Yeah. I can appreciate that. Um. Your boy Travis Scott. Uh huh. Or the baby. We going with Travis Scott. We. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now, baby. <laughs> Hey, yeah. I already know. I just had to ask. I had to ask. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so um, musically, uh -huh. you want you want to rock with these guys? We we rocking some some Jodeci, uh -huh. or we rock with them boys the Jagged Edge. We gonna go. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Jagged Edge. Because mm, okay. you know I came up like in the 2000s, so that was like really popping. Like you know what I'm saying? Music videos and all of that. So I'm going. I'm yeah. going with. Okay, yeah. that's what's up. That's what's up. Old school. Uh -huh. Let's talk about style now. We got your, okay. your Sammy Davis Jr. Mm -hmm. or your Nat King Cole. You know, I'm going to go with Sammy, bro, because it's crazy that you said that because <clears throat> I'm working on this, like, I'm trying to put together this little visual right now. And I was actually doing some research on Sammy, some of Sammy Davis', Davis style. So, yeah, I'm oh. definitely Sammy Davis. Just Cole, bro. He, oh. he did it. Yeah, he was crazy with it. He Call. was crazy. So. All right. Uh, MJ or Prince? I'm going to go Prince. All right. Yeah. So so now we're going to go into the laugh game. We're going to go with some Chappelle, or we're going to go right. with K-Hart or Kevin Hart? Dave Chappelle, for sure. Mm. Yeah. He's he's funny. I like I like I like Dave Chappelle for sure. Yeah, Chappelle's so nonchalant. Just yeah, just yeah. Nah. And then he always hit it right at the middle, like when you don't even expect it. It'd be hella funny. So yeah, yeah, we yeah. For sure, for sure. All right, so we're gonna go with the Queen. So you know, we got our, our Jill sister, Jill Scott. Uh huh. Again, our our, our Houston's own sister, Erica Badu. Um, we're gonna go Badu. Mm. Sure. Mm. All right, now we're gonna slide into some jazz. Okay. Oh man, you go, you gonna stump me, bro? I'm I'm not even gonna know the names, but go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna Maybe. give you I'm gonna give you two, and we'll talk about them. Yeah, sure. Let's do that, bro. All right. So we got Coltrane. Uh huh. Coltrane plays saxophone. Okay. Then you got Miles Davis. Oh. Trumpet. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go trumpet. Okay. Uh Davis. I played the French horn when I was in high school. Okay. I, I got a thing. I got it. Well, actually, I played French horn from. The basically the fifth grade up to like the ninth grade. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm definitely going with that for sure. All right. So here's what I want you to do with that. On top of that, I want you to take some time. If you study in um, Sammy, mm -hmm. check out check out Miles. Okay. Check him out. Like overall, Steez. Yeah. Cold. Cold. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah. No. we're talking like you know fashion, if you will, or design. Mm -hmm. Um, your um, Eve Saint Laurent mm -hmm. or your Alexander McQueen? Saint Saint Laurent for sure. Mm. I just actually I'm waiting on some boots to come right now. 
They on they in the mail. They on the way. I am oh. so excited for my they they my birthday vibe. Oh okay, that's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up, man. Happy, happy birthday. Happy um, and then I would say, um, one. Tell me one underrated designer that you feel like don't get credit. Oh, huh. Let me think. Or enough. Hmm. I can't think of one. Well, I I could go with my friends, like, cause all them boys, like. Okay, let's. I, yeah, let's I, talk I, I talk to my people, man. That, yeah, let's go. Like, like uh, my my guy Chris, um, he he runs a brand called Uniform. Well, actually, we kind of partner together. We run a, we kind of run the brand together. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think I think that's a super underrated brand. So I'm plugging myself. <laughs> what's up? Go for it. That's what's up. I like that. And um, I mean, it's just so many people. Like even here in Houston, man, I feel like they're actually getting praised. But I think they need to get more praise. Like like right now, my my guy Owen on the line right now. He's another tailor, man. That's that's my brother there. And I think you know what I'm saying. He he going crazy. Um, Ryan Lewis, another guy that I. It's just so many people out here that's really going crazy. That's um, cool. As far as the design tip goes, that no, nah, for sure they're gonna do so. They're gonna make some waves soon enough. Cause I think that the 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 fashion here in Houston is is wonderful. I always felt like it was here, but we really starting to get notoriety in, in certain mm -hmm. areas for mm -hmm. sure. And, and them guys right there, the guys you need to be watching out for them. Good. That's what's up. That's what's up. So we didn't, we didn't figure out get get them on the on the podcast. Let's chop it up, man. Let's let's get H Town <laughs> up in here. Get oh what's up? Oh let's do it. You know, <laughs> and all your other boys out there. Um. These are two people that um, I found to really appreciate. We got um, one that um, you know people talk about all the time, and then a brother that I don't think gets a lot of credit, which is um, Oswald Botain. Oh my goodness! I watched the. <laughs> it's crazy. I just wanted to as soon as um, when I was starting to, or when I was growing my knowledge in like the tailoring field, like mm -hmm. I ran into this guy and I kind of like you know listened to his story. I got a book. Watch the man. That guy's there. He's, he definitely is amazing, bro. Yeah, and, you know, and, and he to me, it was one of the individuals that gave us the the, the courage to rock color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know sure. I mean? yeah, because he had the African influence. Mm -hmm. and that that, that kind of what what made the, him do those particular bold colors. I I, I seen that in the what's in there. I was like, yeah, that's yeah, dope. He, he's dope. I mean, everybody talk about. Um, and I can't believe I'm drawing another blank tonight because I know <laughs> everything here. Um, you know, he, he's someone with Tom Ford that everybody talks about, right? So to me, Tom Ford has the ability to, um, his aesthetic is so minimal. Mm -hmm. And it still draws your eye. And he's usually only wearing two colors. For sure, yeah. Period. It's and the details, man. It's the details. Yeah. So, Excuse me, Tom Ford and um, Joe and, and Oswald Botang are two people that I think we can say in this era, and I know I find a lot of appreciation for, but definitely Oswald is super overrated. I, I try to watch everything he has out there. Yeah. So if you know, if you were to spend, and my final question, yep, um, I know you're busy. If you could spend 24 hours with any creative, dead or alive, or designer. Who would that be and why? All right. Let me see. Who would it be? 24 hours with a creator. I would say, I would definitely want to rock with Kanye just to kind of see, like, like what his creative process is for a whole day. You know what I'm saying? He probably don't even do nothing. He probably just be in the bed just chilling. And he'd be like, I don't want to do this right here. And then it just happens. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, but... But I think I think that's somebody that I would like really would, would like to see what that twenty four hours look like for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same man, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just to your point, you know, he's the ultimate influencer. Yeah, and I think outside of of Ye for from a from a designer standpoint, it would it would be Botang. It would be Oswald for sure. Yeah, you know, what I mean, like I, I really could just sit there and just soak him up. You know, what I mean, soak both of them up for different, totally different reasons to your Not point. Sure. Starting tailoring. Yeah. He's a master tailor. A master tailor. You know? Paid so attention. 
I watched those things just to kind of see what they were like, like paying attention to, because like they have the eye, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Kind of mm -hmm. how I start the home, my eye, like on the fit aspect of things and stuff like that. Just kind of like, all right, cool. They say, oh, your jacket should sit like on your body or this, that, and the third when it's, on. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, oh I'll, I'll take that in the key whenever I'm fitting my, my clients, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up, man. Well, brother, I, I really appreciate your time. Man, you I know, think you for having me on, bro. For sure. We we were working on it, man. Just, you know, time time it was the right time tonight. Not for sure. For sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um where can everyone, you know, I want to make sure that anyone out there who's interested in, in your, your services sure. and your product, where can they find you um yeah. on online? Where sure. So um I think the best place will be here on Instagram, uh Manfred dot the Taylor, um, or you can go on my website, uh, G and R dot C O G A N D R dot C O. Um, and that's where you could like schedule your appointments. But I think the best place, if you like looking, I want to see more or see what's going on. Definitely here on Instagram, man. That's where, where everything happens. That's what's up. But <laughs> well, well, yeah. everybody, thank you so much for man, spending some time. For this, sure. this has been an awesome, fruitful conversation with the good brother. For the man, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm, I'm going to keep watching, man. Blessings to you and the family. Thank I know family is important. And, and, and God bless you on, your, on your new venture as far as, like, even just marriage, bro. Like, nah, yeah. Being with my wife for 20 years, man. 20, bro? That's 20 what we, I need to talk to you offline, though. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. 20 in the game. We, we can chop it up. Because there's, there's so much that, you know, especially culturally, we don't talk about. Mm-hmm. And then I think, secondly, men don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, whenever you're ready, let's do That's it. You know what I mean? Let's do it. Yeah. That's what's up. So, everyone, thank you so much for your time, your attention tonight. Uh, you know, having a great honor and pleasure of speaking with the good brother, man, Manfred. Just, just, just a dope, dope brother. Manfred Spencer here at Jump School. You have a wonderful night. You too, brother. Thank you to you. And we'll see you on the next one. I hope you enjoyed today's amazing interview. Today's episode was brought to you by my new book, Why Style Matters, The Mindset of Dressing Well and How It Impacts Your Life. To get your autographed copy, click the link in the description.